back in my leather workshop and my friend Henrik is here, known from a previous video, the small update when I passed a thousand subscribers. Very much with the help of your girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> who forgot to subscribe. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're not exactly keeping a professional level in the workshop now. It's uh, Christmas times, first of Advent is coming up. We're having a nice Christmas beer in the workshop, looking at his instruments with all the straps I made for him in the past. And uh, we have been talking about shooting a video when I make a new one for him. So that's the plan for today. Maybe you could yeah. say something about the stuff. On the yeah, well, well, we've got, we got a mandolin, we've got a sitter. With the sitter? Yeah, it's a 10 string, uh, big Irish bazooka kind of thing. Uh, but we got an extra low string, so a nice bass. Yeah, I can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got, of course, we got the banjo. Uh, we made a. Uh, that's that's, that's the latest one I made for you. Yeah. Last time you were here. Yeah, it's a quite sturdy uh, because the banjo is quite heavy, and they also got a rugged uh, back, which. Uh, Mm. It causes it not to slip. Yeah, because that's yeah. the problem with this track, isn't it? Yeah. That it so nose dives a bit. You will it. make a new one for me. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> this is a qu quite cool strap you made. I think this was the first you did. With um, instead, uh, of, instead of hooking it on a hoop, like like these are, a little stud. Mm. Um, it's, uh, we made a, a little loop so it can hang from the, whatever it's called, a curl or something. Mm. And a, a traditional stud in that hand. Um, the problem with what uh, I'm having with this strap is that it's a bit um, slick on the, the back side. Mm -hmm. So when I have this on me, it's, uh, because the head is so heavy, it tends to dive down. It's a typical uh, Gibson SG problem for you to play electric guitar. You might recognize that. Yeah. The nose dive thing. And as we, we're going, we're going to make it a bit thicker as well. A bit less strain on the shoulders. Good for us who are getting past 50. <laughs> <laughs> You're not there yet, are you? I am. You are. I forgot. <laughs> when did you turn 50? Well, this summer. You did? Yeah. Yeah. I missed that party. Yeah. I don't remember why. You were in the studio. I was in the studio. Yes, I do play, but not these. <laughs> Beatrice was there though. Yeah, she was. she was. Good to have some sort of representation. <laughs> One of our best friends, 50 year birthday. Anyway, uh, let's take a closer look on them. Yep. And what we're gonna do with this one. Yep. Oh, and I'm planning to shoot this video, seeing as it's a little bit uh, relaxed with beer and such with my hair down because I got a stupid comment on one of my previous videos. Uh, what was the comment? People would take you more seriously if you cut your hair. So I'm doing this one with my hair down. Cheers to you. Let's have a look at them. So this was the latest strap. Yeah with the banjo and um, you made it very nice because my previous strap I had had the metal hooks who were hanging on it and goes around these metal hoops that must cause a lot side. of rattle when you play yeah yeah uh, not really because of the, because of the tension uh, but but uh, when, when it's not on it's it uh, rattles and this so, mm. so we made uh, yeah you made this um of a contraption with leather straps so it's that's right i'm put an extra loop here to just Keep those two together a bit when the, the length of it is adjusted. That worked all right, I think. Yeah, it was a very nice touch. And this one has, uh, it's not really a suede liner, it's just a regular leather that I put uh, inside out because I don't have any good suede in the workshop right now, but that works the same way. So that is a little bit non slippery. Let's look at the other straps. Yeah. So this is the mandolin. First strap. Yeah, I think this was the first you made for me. It's a very thin 
<laughs> yeah, it's well, a very small instrument. Yeah, well, the, the mandolin doesn't weigh much and it's mm. quite small, so you just need something to basically yeah. hold it. And it also had to be small to get in here, since uh, the suspension is just a loop on the strap itself. So you can't be much wider than this to fit nicely in here, I think. So. Well, it's quite yeah. and, and it's uh, soft. Uh, good soft leather, so it mm. won't damage the finish on the instrument yeah. more than it has to. It was a little bit risky to make it that thin and also punch a hole here, but since it's thick enough, I could make a slot here and it. Yeah, it seems to be holding up fine. Yeah, and when it doesn't, I can make a new one because this last thin bit is just put on with a buckle, so that's replaceable very easily. Yeah, and on the other end, it's just. Uh, yeah, uh, classic, classic for, for the stud there. And that one doesn't have a non-slip lining, but uh, this instrument doesn't really require it because no, it's, it's it has to weight down in the bottom more than up in the head. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's staying put well, mm. most of the time. Yeah, looks a bit nice, and now when you have used it a bit, yeah, it's not so clean anymore. <laughs> this Irish pub thing. Oh yeah, dirt going on here. It's <laughs> baptized in Guinness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what more do we have? Oh yeah, well, we have the, the last strap, well, the one that we're going to replace on the Citroen. And it's uh, more more of a standard uh, for for studs. Th this one we're gon gonna make a bit more. Did I make this for another instrument or? Yeah, actually. Mm. <laughs> um, but but since it has a better slick, um, it's actually actually for my mandolin. I didn't bring that one with mm. me today. It's a slightly bigger mandolin, um, but not as big and heavy as no, this, right? not especially not with, not with uh, such a heavy head. Yeah, well, it's got ten strings, so it's uh, adding an extra pair of yeah. um, uh, tuners. So it adds a bit of weight. Yeah, it does. Mm. Um, so uh, this uh, strap will not sit on this. No, uh, I, I won't use it. Uh, I, I used. Uh, I, I need something that has a little more friction in mm. the back. A little uh, bit wider. A little bit wider, so to, to, mm. to put a li little bit less strain on my shoulders. It's a fun detail. This is actually a buckle from uh, our medieval storage. We have been doing medieval markets and stuff for many years, me and my fiance. And this is a 14th or 15th century buckle, actually, for purses and stuff. But it looks pretty nice on this strap as well. Yeah, just thought, yeah. I, thought I'd mention that because I notice it. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> nobody else does. <laughs> <laughs> but you do. Uh, well, and the strap I've been using. It's in a factory made. I uh, bought mm. it at a music shop actually for a guitar mm. back in the days. And um, it's got, got a bit, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it got stamped patterns on it. Uh, but this, this actually got a, a bit sturdier, a bit more. Yes, this uh, is a suede so yeah. liner. Very beaten up now. But yeah, well, it's been a few years. Mm. Uh, this is a bit too wide for, for this one though. I think, uh, and uh, it started to, to get a bit stiff with age. Yeah. So we're aiming for a width somewhere in between these two. Yeah. Shouldn't be that difficult. And maybe brown, since that seems to be your color. Oh yeah, I <laughs> like brown, not black. Well, we can use this as a basic template to get all the measurements from. Yeah. And uh, the bottom part of it with this adjustment well, if that works now, then we just copy that, I think. Yeah. But make it in a nice brown shade with some sort of non-slip lining on yeah. the back. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Let's do it. We have selected some materials for the strap. This. Uh, Thicker leather here is well, for the main part of the strap. It's uh, 
its purpose is to make uh, dog leashes actually. It's slightly thicker than a regular belt leather and both uh, soft and strong and very nice color to it as well. And uh, then we have uh, something here that is not a suede since I don't have that in the workshop now. It's actually a pretty decent quality leather this. We used to make aprons out of it before but we will just turn the grain side. I think it's called the grain side, right? The, or is this the grain side? Yeah, I'm not sure. When I can't the, remember now. But well, the rugged side. <laughs> yeah, the flesh side. Maybe it's the flesh side. That will be turned outwards now, so we get the friction from that, so the nose on the instrument doesn't dive. This will stick a little bit to the shoulder. That's the plan. <laughs> Almost a shame to use nice leather like this for liner, but I have more of it, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have suede, so we'll use this. Before, when I have been uh, doing stuff like this and other stuff, as you can see in the knife sheath videos, if you are familiar with those, I made paper templates. But I don't need to do that this time. It's much easier when it's just a strap with it. A uniform width all the way to just cut the strap with the desired width to the right length and I can get the length from the old strap and then I will shape the edges of it and uh, when that's done I will make this small what do you call that bottom strap is that even a term <laughs> bottom <laughs> strap we invent that term now if yeah, you well, it's loose because you have to. You're able to regulate the, the length of it. That's right. So, so we will save this for later and cut a strap with the same length as this, but slightly narrower. And this is uh, what is it? About seventy millimeters which for translation is like two and three quarter inches and you want something around 50 I think millimeters. 50 millimeters, yeah. Yeah, which is about two inches. Or just proud of two inches, but thereabouts. So we do that. And then it's very handy to have one of these strap cutters. If you don't have that, You can always get by with a long straight edge and a cheap knife. I did that <laughs> for many years when I was younger. You still need it because you have to create a straight edge that you can run the strap cutter along. Once you've done that it's very nice to have this, especially if you make many straps. And to my experience, you shouldn't trust your edge for too long because leather is uh, it's a, a ver material. very living and flexible material. So when you've made straight, straight edge, cut a few straps, then you check it with a straight edge again and you can see there is a curve to it because it just moves. There are lots of tensions and stuff in the hide and uh, that curve appears after just a few cuts. So. Even though I think it's a fairly straight edge, I won't trust it. I will uh, make a new cut with the help of this. And then I'll use the strap cutter. Well, the strap is about the same length as the ruler. I have a bit of margin in the ruler, so I'll just estimate out of that. And since I'm right-handed, I have to Turn the roll around. Ah, here comes Henke with a yeah. new.
Christmas beer. <laughs> I've always thought they brew the best beers around the big holidays, especially Christmas. Don't you agree? They have hibernation? Uh, uh, no, uh, breweries in general, I think they make their best stuff when Christmas is coming up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lovely season. I wonder if this is sharp enough. That's not how you test it. <laughs> <laughs> Thick leather is always better to cut a few times than trying to push through with one cut with too much force. Then you'll just tilt the blade or move the ruler, whatever. Should be long enough, yes. And some to spare, so I have somewhere to go with the strap cutter. Let's of that. Haven't been in the workshop, the leather workshop for some time now. That's why I'm fumbling a bit. Nick the leather with my knife. But this will be the margin that will be cut away later. I'll use that part of the leather. And since I'm right-handed, now I have to turn the leather around again. Or do I? No, stupid. It was the right <laughs> way around. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Should have started on the other side of the road. Well, I'll just cut it like a lefty then, won't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will. What did we say? 50 millimeters? Yes. There is a scale on the strap cutter itself, but uh, doesn't hurt to check it with a ruler. Inside here is a small blade on the zero mark and that's where it cuts and uh, you run it along the straight edge of the leather on this flat side of the cutter. These small blades they are replaceable but they last a lot longer if you have some way to just strop them like you would do when you sharpen a knife. So uh, I have uh, a small leather strip here that fits the purpose. It's a bit tricky to get the grip right, but yeah. Something like that takes care of the outside of the edge. And then I want to stroke the inside of the edge. See if it cuts or not. The most important thing is to have a sharp blade and make sure that the edge of the leather touches the handle of uh, the strap cutter. Would have been a lot easier if I started from the other end of the road, but ah. it works this way too. There are fancier strap cutters made from brass or steel. I own a few. They cost a lot of money and they don't really do the job much better than this cheap wooden one. 
and you need to sharpen the knife all the time this small blade inside here you can just strop a little bit and then replace so uh, after trying those fancy tools I just went back to this cheap thing and this is also available a lot more easily than those so-called professional level tools that you have to find in just a few stores and pay much more money for. There's the strap. A little bit thinner as you wanted. Uh, yeah. Now where did I nick it? Down there. Yeah it's just on the end. Get rid of that. Because I realized I don't want to cut off too much on this end because it's uh, the fiber structure is more dense here and that's a good thing. This is a bit looser. You can also see it on the back. This is more uniform. This is a little bit rugged. That's easier to deform and stretch over time. So we'll just get rid of the waste on this side instead and keep the good side. And there we go. That's the length. And we'll probably need this as a template. That's about it. Apart from that, we don't need it anymore. To uh, decide on the shape of the tip, I think we should look at the instrument a little bit. Yeah. I want to see the bottom of it. The bottom? No. Uh, of course not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but those studs are the same, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. That's uh, that's what I'm after. You don't want to make the tip too narrow because then it will look ridiculous on this yeah. and be a bit weak it's as well. Perhaps. It's going to wrap around here, so so this this little angle will affect. Uh -huh. uh, so, it will so like that. Yeah, and come up here. That doesn't look like a regular guitar to me. That's what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's it's better to have the strap down here mm. so, so it wraps around because it, it would never come loose never ever flex mm. out yeah. or anything so you get all the weight and, and, and the bend so it's really relieving I understand the idea mm. 30 mil 35 I think maybe something like that 30 would be good all right yep and uh, it doesn't have to be much it's just just around the ending. Yeah. I will uh, get to the placement of the hole later. Yeah. And I will just make the basic shape of the tip. Yeah. But 30 mil, I think, and then round it off. That will be. Yeah, I think. Excellent. Yeah, just just a nice curve to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll taper it a bit. I think that looks nice. Yeah. But if you don't want it tapered, then I will just. But then it will be very wide out here. Oh, well. you know best. <laughs> then I will taper it. One of my woodworking chisels, one of the gouges. This actually lives most of the time here in the leather workshop because it has a great curve to round off strap ends with. I'm not measuring this, as you can see, I'm just doing it by eye. One good hit, that's all it takes. And a little bit of knife and ruler. I have no plan for the exact taper, I just wing it. And there we go. Now you could be a little bit more careful 
if you want to. Almost a bit over the top, but why not? I have a square here. Put the corner on the end of the taper cut. And uh, use an awl. Just make a slight imprint here. I'm not really using the tip. I'm using the round part next to the tip because I don't want a sharp mark on the leather. And that can be rubbed out later if you want to. And uh, easier to turn it around if you're not ambidextrous, which I am not. Which was pretty obvious when I used the strap cutter before, I think. For this end, I use a slightly smaller gouge. And I'll just take off the corners to a somewhat round shape. That's right. I don't always need my mallet because I'm very tough like that. <laughs> Nice and soft materials, don't need much force. Let's get rid of that for now. And bring out the liner. When using the flesh side, or was it called the grain side? Anyway, the back side, not the outside, the inside. Uh, visible as we will do now you have to watch out for the stamps and here is the stamp for this one nice and shiny silver numbers you don't want that on the back side of your strap even though it won't show often now i know i said we're not having a professional situation here today but celebrating the upcoming holiday with Christmas beer and such, but having that showing on the strap, even if it's on the backside, that would be a bit too unprofessional for me. So we'll avoid that. What do you know? It comes back. off the table. Oh, I ask for one, I get three. Like, Gimli. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I just wanted to find yeah. this. Hair, <laughs> strain of hand, hair from Galadio. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's right. I ask for one, I got three. Yeah. Well, you have more use for fingers than strands of hair, in my opinion. Anyway, I just keep mine for decorational purposes. <laughs> <laughs> But this is a roller, rotary cutter, and for soft leathers you can let go now, like this. This isn't such a bad idea, it's uh, mostly used for textile work, maybe cutting paper, but it's not bad for, uh, for leather work if it's not too thick. And. Uh, you could cut it with this. This is probably sturdy enough for this, but if it's even even thinner and softer, then it will just wrinkle when you pull the blade through. And then a rotor cutter is very nice. So I'm, even though I might be totally okay with this, I will use this now for demonstrational purposes. There you go. Isn't that just lovely? It is. I think so. And uh, if this was a suede liner, then we would have this rugged texture on both sides. And I could just glue this on top of here. Now I can't do that, so I will just 
cut off a piece with a decent margin on both sides and I flip it around and give it a special treatment which we will get to in the next scene this nice side is very shiny glue will not adhere to that so I'll have to roughen it up a bit with this horrible tool that has lots of sharp little metal teeth here this is not the proper way to test it by the way but it's not as sharp as a knife at least but when you work with it you will have to be careful so you don't come too close to your fingers because on several occasions even though I know about it I have been scratching myself sometimes a little bit badly <laughs> Anyway, this is the idea. If you don't have one of these, which I have no idea what to call in English, rugging tape maybe, I don't know, then you can use some sort of coarse sandpaper. It doesn't work as well, but it works if you have a little bit more patience. work this but it won't last forever and if you don't do this your glue joint will fail I will not glue this right now uh, because when I do uh, the solvents in the glue will uh, make this room unbearable for a while and I don't have proper ventilation here. Actually I prefer to do this in the summertime when I can be outside. Uh, but before I do that and we have to leave the premises a little bit, I will uh, make this, what did we call it, bottom strap? Yeah, well, I don't think it's Buster. Buster. No, it's not there. Buster. <laughs> 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 For love of Jesus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I make some marks with the awl on both ends. And just to be really. Careful, I will uh, measure the distance between these two and make the second prick in this end according to that measurement. Since I don't trust this old strap to have a uniform width all the way, you never know, but you can trust this. mark here so I know where to end the cut. I put the corner of my ruler just on the mark where I need to stop the cut. So I make sure not to run past the point. The first light cut I make just up to the mark but I stop like in a millimeter or two before the all mark I made there so I don't run past it with a knife. And then I can finish the cut Not all the way, but almost up to it. And I can get rid of the ruler. 
because this is uh, a serious part of the video where I try to be a little bit professional because when you have to stop the cut in the middle of the workpiece like that you don't run the knife all the way up to it because I can assure you you will run past it and then you will have a nick in the leather on the part you want to keep and we will make a plate shape like this so uh, if there is a nick in the leather there that will mean we have a cut in here that will make the strap more likely to crack and break here over time so what you do is that you flip your knife around put the tip in your mark push it down and finish the cut in the other direction like that there are many ways to make the plate shape here if um, if I were to have a specific idea of the shape I would make a paper template probably but it will be on the back side of the strap so I think we'll just copy this shape more or less and uh, Henke has approved of that method so we will go with it oh yes if you don't like it in the end it's your own fault oh yeah <laughs> sure play the customer <laughs> so I will just scratch around it This is not the type of oil you use to make holes in leather when you sew. Some companies actually sell it as that. It is not, it's way too fat and not sharp enough. It's a scratch oil, nothing else. You can make some holes if you really need to. If you hit it really hard. And you can use it to widen some holes, but for the most part it is just a scratch tool to make marks on the leather because when you are marking on the nice side you don't want to use a pen you want to use something like this I guess I could mark for the slot as well not sure if I need it but why not there we have it can't hurt I guess and now I will just wrap, cut it out so I can get rid of this big piece of leather. And same here. Oh, important again to be careful where the cut ends. When I rough cut, I just move blade back a little bit cut out like that because these points are a bit critical now you don't want to corrupt them that's my serious side again anyway <coughs> sometimes you need to be a bit serious and to get this little scrap piece off same thing again move the knife around put the point where the two cuts meet push it down and pull it back then you have no damages where the cuts meet push it down pull away push it down and pull away that's how you do it these scratch marks are Actually, most of the suggestion is better to take a straight edge out when you make your cuts. And there's almost no material at all to rest the straight edge on here, so we flip it around. Unless you are ambidextrous. Then you switch to your left hand instead of your right. Uh, I can't do that. Or maybe I can. I haven't really tried it. <laughs> nah. 
avoid that technique if you're not ambidextrous. I go as close as I can without having the tips of the blade entering the leather. Looking good. How long? Yay long. There we have it. Just punch a slot for the strap to pass through when you adjust it. Looks about right. And some of these cutters require you to use a heavy metal hammer. Usually you don't use metal hammers on leather punches and such but for these particular punches you have to not for these regular round punches then you use a rawhide mallet this is uh, a weighted one it has a lead weight inside but this is a big slot it needs a firmer hand there's not much to say about this really just Line the cutter up with your marks and it is surprisingly easy to put it a little bit off so be careful <laughs> if you want it to look nice and then it's just brute force really now oh, this piece is almost ready apart from uh, beveling the edges there are special tools for that you can't really uh, substitute them with the uh, cheap knives or anything really. You just have to get the proper tool. I have a couple of them. These three here, they are in different sizes. They cut away uh, a different amount of material from the edge. And uh, for this slightly thicker leather, the number three, which takes away the most, is usually good, I think. I also have one of these fancy <laughs> professional edge bevelers that I don't really use. Saddlers use these things. Uh, I don't work with the type of techniques where this comes into its right, I think. But I have it, should I ever need it. But uh, these small ones cheap, handy, available in many web shops and stores. You need to find the right angle when you work with this tool. Uh, like 45 degrees off the edge. You feel when you have the right angle because it doesn't really cut properly if you don't. And it only cuts to a certain depth so you can't take away too much with it very easy tool to learn how to use. I usually don't start on the grain side, I start on the flesh side. Maybe since we are having such a good time here in the workshop today, I forgot about that. There's a reason for this. On this thick and sturdy leather it's hardly noticeable but if you bevel the edges of a slightly thinner leather you need support from the opposing side down towards the work surface and it's harder to cut on the flesh side than on the grain side so you need less of that support when you cut the grain side. That's why you start on the flesh side because then you have the nice sturdy grain side supporting your piece when you are cutting on the difficult side. Try it and you will notice the difference. Uh, you could 
remember this if you make a rule out of saving the nice side for later, <laughs> I guess. Do the ugly and boring thing first and then you have the nice side to look forward to. I don't know. Um, use that as a mind tool if, if it works for you. It's trickier to get into all the curves and so on. I usually never bevel slots like this. I think they look nicer if you don't go in and meddle with these tools. Because you can't get into the sharp turns of them anyway. Time to uh, glue the liner. Last time I did this we had to take a long break because of the nasty fumes. And I think I was using this. I mean, everything that comes in a metal can looks unhealthy, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and this has some really ugly solvents in it. And it was also a bit old, so I had to I had to put even more solvent in it. <laughs> it was really funny having these fumes in the room, even though we vented it as good as possible. Uh, this time though, I don't think I want to use this. Uh, the strength of it is a little bit overkill for a, for a strap like this. So I have something that's just mildly nasty. <laughs> and I don't have to put extra solvent in it to make it work. Still smells terrible though, and uh, probably a pretty effective way to burn your brain cells, but there are more pleasant ways to do that. So I'll stick to that. We'll apply the glue and just get out of here. And leave it. Because it's just a regular contact cement, really. You put it on, let it dry for a bit, different glues have different opening times. should pay a little bit of attention to that if you use them. And then when it uh, dries up to the point where you can finish the joint, we will get down here again in the workshop and just put them together. Yeah. But now let's apply this nastiness. This one's almost out, so I'm just Take the other one out right away. And by the way, glue spreaders, don't buy them if you work with leather, just use a piece of scrap, scrap leather, cut the bevel on the edge, and you're good to go. You can spend your hard earned money on funnier things. As leather is a porous material, you have to apply two coats usually to get a good glue joint. Old news for everybody that's ever worked with contact cement, I guess. But maybe not everybody has. So you put a thin coat on, otherwise it takes forever and it dries on the surface, but not underneath that. And then your joint won't work. So a thin, even coat. And this liner is uh, a lot wider than the strap itself, so I don't have to go out all the way to the edges. But on this piece, I will have to do that.
nice and warm here in the workshop now because I've been burning the wood stove a little bit and we are two persons instead of one but the glue dries very quickly so I'm already applying the second coat you see on the glue when it get sort of a matte look when it doesn't look wet anymore you can also touch it carefully and see if it starts to become sticky then you can apply the second coat first coat is like a primer the second coat is the adhesive layer very important on this piece to get the glue all the way out to the edge starting to stick on it yes it starts to stick a bit our partners were just down here telling us that food is almost on the table upstairs so the timing could be a lot worse right there we go now we leave it to cure a little bit before I press it together right let's go and leave this poisonous fumes back again bit less fumy that's it no that's not it you have to press it first Get rid of uh, some glue residue that came around to the other side. You can usually just rub with your fingertip to get off. That's why you need to use this on the side of the leather that you want the glue to stick onto. There are also other tools for this. You can use a press roll if you prefer that. This is uh, less prone to make dents in the surface of the leather. But if you have a good cobbler's hammer that's not damaged or dirty then you can you apply more force with this. So I usually prefer it. It's a little bit a matter of taste, I suppose. But you can also use a roller. A lot of people have some sort of hammer at home. If you just polish the head of it, you can use it for this. This thing you probably will have to go out and buy. The most important thing is to uh, hammer along the edge. The little bit outside of the seam will uh, rely entirely on the glue to keep together inside of, of the seam on the big flat there not so critical there but just along the edge is a bit critical <laughs> that was hard work yeah time for dinner Dinner still awaits actually. The glue dried so quickly that we couldn't eat before doing this. But now we can, so now we'll take a break. Didn't 
sick too badly. Oh, very good. Freshly cooked beef, some fried potatoes. Works nice every one. time. Yeah. Let's get back to business. Glue has cured. Time to trim off the lining. <laughs> Nothing particularly complicated about this, just a matter of cutting along the edge and following it as close as possible. The only hazard here is that um, you run the risk of cutting it too close and running into the top layer. It's mostly a matter of not being over ambitious, really. You just have to be ambitious enough. That's a good general rule, I think. Don't be over ambitious, just be ambitious enough. Maybe I'll make a t-shirt out of that. It's not a bad idea. A little trick here that you might want to pick up is the lining is uh, usually, in this case anyway, uh, thinner and a little bit more flexible. So it helps if you pull that away from the cut, stretch it a little bit. Because that puts a little bit of tension on it where the knife cuts it and that makes the cut run a little bit smoother. Here's my trusty old Singer 132K6 if you're interested. I don't know how old it is, at least from the 50s. It never breaks down. Give it like half a drop of oil every other year and it just runs. It doesn't do everything, but it does straight stitching very reliably. You can of course hand stitch this. I will not show that in this video, but if you want to see how to properly hand stitch with a saddle stitch, you should look at my knife sheath series. It makes a bit of a racket when you fire it up, but it's worth it.
I'm gonna need some assist assistance, Hank. All right. Don't you have a lighter in your pocket? I do. This polyester threads. Uh, it's quite good just to burn and melt them a bit when you made a knot. stuck there forever that's the stitching done now it's uh, time to bevel the edges on this uh, I'm doing the same mistake as before <laughs> the flash side first that was what I said was it so this is basically what you saw before on the small strap only difference here is that you have to think about this when you stitch it if you put the seam too close to the edge you will uh, run the risk of damaging the thread with uh, the edge beveler but apart from that it's just same really Edge polishing. A bowl of plain water. It helps if it has a little bit of uh, heat to it. The idea is that well, you can really polish the edge of uh, leather with two basic principles. Either you use water and then it's a sort of wet shaping or you use frictional heat. Uh, and I do that sometimes. Uh, but for this demonstration I'll show uh, well, basically it's wet shaping with water, but you will also add some heat when you move the tool that you polish with. Maybe it's a combination of both, really. Sometimes I just use my finger. If you want to be a bit quicker, use a sponge of some sort or a rag. The rounded part of a tool handle is... Uh, totally sufficient for this job. I made a little tool that makes it easier. <sighs> yeah, a little bit of scrap wood with a groove. I made that with a round file for chainsaws I think. It's about the same width as most of the straps I make. That's uh, the important part so it fits over the edge. You don't want the leather to be super wet, you want it to be damp. And then you just rub the tool of your choice along the edge and that rounds it off a bit. It's not a super fun job perhaps, but it's not a hard job. It makes a big difference in the end anyway, and that's something that you will be happy about. So you should really never make a leather strap without polishing the edge a little bit. I will put dye on it also after this step. There are some companies I have heard who sells edge dyes and call it self-polishing. Uh, that's just a perfect example of uh, don't believe everything you hear. No dye in the world can mechanically change the shape of a material like this. You will seal the edge of course with that sort of dye but it won't get a smoother shape. To obtain that, you have to do something like this. No way around it. 
it's hard to make the camera capture the difference but when you have your fingers on it you feel it this is the unpolished side now it's pretty rough and this is polished a lot more smooth After this step there is a choice of either putting an edge die on or go straight to polishing wax. Uh, that's the alternatives I usually choose between anyway. Don't know if there are any more options. And uh, both those methods seals the edge a little bit. The edge die is a little bit more permanent. The wax sits there for quite a while. Maybe you have to do some maintenance on it after a few years or so. But those are the choices. And uh, we still haven't made a choice with this strap. I guess we'll do it now. Thank you. Yeah. To die or not to die. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> uh, today. Today? Oh yes. Today we die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's die. Edge die. Uh, one type of edge die. This is very handy, I think. It has these disposable tips made out of foam. can't clean these after you're done with them they dry up and get hard so you have to replace them um, and then it works like a big marker really and you run them along the edge like a big marker pen uh, if you can't find that sort of product you can probably get them in kegs or bottles then you just have to use some sort of sponge or rag to apply the dye that's probably more common but since I have this very convenient contraption I'm gonna use it this one is dark brown uh, I have a black one as well but Henke isn't that fond of black so we will stay away from that The main difference between edge die and the regular leather die is that uh, the edge die coats the surface and the regular leather die penetrates the leather like a stain. Actually I believe this edge die also penetrates a bit but it is also supposed to make sort of a lacquer finish on top. We're gonna look close up on uh, the difference here now. Here's where I applied the dye and after my fingers here is the undyed edge. And as you can see you get the more uniform impression of the edge than you do here. And that's the general idea, apart from making a slightly more durable edge as well. And of course I'm putting the die on the edges of the small strap as well. Polishing wax. You apply this after the die has cured. This one has a brown color to it. There are also undyed waxes, but since this is a dark brown edge dye, I use the brown wax and then use this polishing tool again. Or some sort of tool handle, preferably with a lacquered finish so it's smooth and hard. Whatever you find handy. And 
this final touch makes a big difference. Well, perhaps the camera picks it up, perhaps it doesn't. This one is polished with wax. This part still isn't. You feel the difference when you have your fingers on it. And uh, this wax coating protects the edge a little bit extra. Especially interesting to do it on belts since it runs a little bit smoother through the loops in your pants. Slots for the back strap. I'll use the old strap as a template. Not so easy to center it since it's a bit wider than the new strap. I'll try to do that. My solution is not to mark all the way out to the edges if I am off to one side. I'll just mark top and bottom of the slots. Then I can just use my eyes <laughs> to see. So I put the punch in the center of the strap. Holes for uh, the, studs. The, the studs. Thank you. <laughs> the strap studs. I think I will get by with an eight millimeter round punch. I have a set of round punches here, measuring from one up to eight millimeters, and then from some reason it jumps to ten, and then to fifteen. So. I think 8 will cut it pretty good. I think 10 will be a bit big based on how the old strap looks. Yeah. One nice round hole. But you can't get that over a big fat strap post without making a slot. Behind it. I could do that with an ordinary knife like this, but I have this little chisel that has a double edge. You can use an ordinary chisel as well. That's it. Now, if I look at the old strap that uh, cut runs a little bit further. So I will copy that, since it's a pretty big stud that this strap will pass over. I think this will do it. And I'll do the same on this. Something like that. And I will see if it works or not. See if it fits. Oh yeah, you want to put it on? Right. The tuner went away. <laughs> oh yeah. It's working perfectly. No problems getting it on there. No. No we were all free. It might as still. We have to put this take this on. Yes. Maybe we should try this as well because this strap is a bit thicker because of the lining. Oh yeah. See if that gives you any problems. It can be a bit tight since you won't remove it that often. Yeah, yeah. Do you need a slightly longer cut on that one? It shouldn't have to. It shouldn't, but you never know. That strap isn't as flexible. Oh, there it went. It works? Yeah. Great. You just leave it there and uh, yeah, put, put, put this in. Yeah. 
good. Should we just estimate where to put this? I think it's the first. So the first. No, no, second. Mm. We have to go <laughs> go back. Mm. So it goes down and through. Almost an ancient system, this. Yeah, yeah, well, it's a great traditional way to do it. Yeah. There you go. Should be easier the second time around. Yes. There it goes. Mm. Well, there it hangs. There it hangs. Yeah, it still, still drops, but it's. But it doesn't slip on the shoulder. It doesn't slip on the shoulder. It's a bit of a tune. Thank you, folks. I still dips a little bit, but not at all as it used to. That's because the the balance of the instrument is a little bit off, but the strap doesn't slide. The strap doesn't slide, but the balance of the instrument you couldn't do much about. No, I've done my part. No, oh, you did. Now you take your complaints to the maker. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Dobran, yeah, you'll be hearing from me. <laughs> Alright folks, so I hope you enjoyed this little video, a little bit different than my usual stuff, celebrating the beginning of the biggest holiday of the year. If you found it interesting, let me know in the comments, I might make a few others similar to this. Maybe we can even get Henke to come over to the workshop once more. He's also playing the bass, maybe he needs a new bass strap. Oh yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Your, your old one is dry. Always up, need a good shot. <laughs> you you need to to keep your instruments firm and um, secure once you're playing. Uh, this, yeah, that's this important. Costs a, co this costs a quite a few bucks. So you, so you don't want to put, put the one, uh, cheap crappy strap on it that might break or to drop it and destroy it. That's yeah, it's a this mm. is a nightmare situation. Mm. This is a real quality. Uh, I'm so thankful. Thank you so much. Yeah, you have a nice little set of straps now. Yeah. <laughs> From the same <laughs> workshop. <laughs> All right then. Great to have you here as always. Slancha. Slancha. And thank you for the beer. My pleasure. Christmas holiday. And I hope you will uh, be back on my channel as soon as I release something new. Until then, take care.